Welcome back. The list of sources section of the referencing system that you're using functions to allow the professor to be able to trace back to the original the source of what you used in your paper. A professor might want to do this for a couple of reasons. Professors may want to check the original to compare to your paraphrase or summary. A professor may want to do this to ensure that you have actually used the original appropriately and haven't distorted or changed the original meaning. Professors may want to know whether you used a scholarly reference or not. I'll talk more about scholarly references later on. Finally, professors may want to ensure that you have adequately consulted the literature. If the former point was about the quality of your sources, this point is about the breadth of them. For most students, the list of sources is not the problem in their referencing. There are fairly clear standards about the formatting of the list, and there's even software that you can use to help you with this. For most students, the problem is the quality of the sources that you're using. And the highest quality of source that you can use is called a scholarly reference. A scholarly reference is a source that is written by PhDs, for PhDs, in PhD journals, which are PhD reviewed. Let us look at each of these in more detail. By a PhD means that the person has some authority to write on that subject. In academics, this usually means a PhD in that discipline, but not always. For PhDs means that it's written for those in the know, not a public audience. The content of these journals is often dense and complex and assumes some background knowledge on the subject. In a PhD journal means in a discipline-specific journal, somewhere that PhDs use to contribute or share knowledge with one another. PhD reviewed means that before the writing could be published, it had to be scrutinized by other PhDs to ensure that it was of sufficient quality and accuracy to warrant publishing. This has lots of implications for students who do their research predominantly on the internet. There certainly are online PhD journals there, but a lot of what's on the internet is not scholarly. The easiest way to correct this is to use a recommended search engine of scholarly journals. The best way to learn how to use one of these is to take a library tour or speak with a reference librarian. Many librarians know what constitutes a scholarly journal in each of the particular fields that are assigned to them, so feel free to ask them. Getting comfortable with your library is an essential university skill. Don't wait till fourth year. Take a library tour, get comfortable with your library. You'll find that writing your papers is so much easier when you have good research tools on hand. A common mistake that many students make when it comes to referencing is the confusion around common knowledge. You might have heard that if something is common knowledge, that is if everybody knows about it, then you don't have to cite it. Well, this is true. The problem is, how common is that knowledge? For example, in a physics course, you probably would not need to cite the formula for Newton's second law. Nobody gets to university physics without knowing this. But a newly developed formula, or an unusual formula, might have to be cited. Another common tripping point for many students is the fact citation. Here's an example of one. On the surface, this looks like it's just a fact. Nobody could own it. This is the surface area of the Earth, and that's all there is to it. But this would be a mistake. Most facts are the result of long hours by researchers doing calculations and collecting data. In fact, this is a property citation. Let's just assume for a moment that you borrowed Weiss's method for calculating the surface area of the Earth, but did all the calculations yourself and came up with a different number. Do you still have to cite them? Absolutely. But not in relation to the number, which belongs to you because you did the work, but because you used the method that he thought up. So you must cite that. The issue of common knowledge can be very tricky, especially at the graduate level. If you have any doubts, always cite. And by all means, have a conversation with your thesis supervisor or your professor about what constitutes common knowledge in your field.